Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sivaraman of InnoIndices.com. Hope you are able to hear me. Let me display the PowerPoint presentation. Asian session live market analysis for this particular week. It is a new month, July, from 2nd to 6th, the first week of July. How exactly the market is expected to behave? So we will try to make an analysis pertaining to that based on the focus model. So today is 2nd July, so between 5 and 5.45 GMT, I'll use the focused algorithm model as well as the market reading and try to give you what are the expectations in this particular week. And also we will review about the trading strategy, what we can use it in order to take positions during the appropriate times of the market move and try to earn from there. So first of all, the derived forecast. The forecast is statistically derived and the sequential statistical analysis have been done in order to find out what could be the possible moves in this market. Now on Friday, we have seen that Euro and GBB made very big gains from the start of the Japanese session. And really on Thursday, they made a very big drop and totally compensated and gained more on Friday. So this is nothing but a typical volatile move to hit the stops on either way and to bring in margin call either way. So on Thursday, it was appearing as if Euro is going to collapse and probably it may not recover at all. And on Friday, it became so bullish and everyone was telling that the retracement may not be possible. So that is how they make the extreme moves in the market to change the market sentiments. So ultimately, the market is sentiment driven and they try to trigger the sentiments appropriately and in a very quick successive time frame. As a result, our mind find it extremely difficult to catch up with it of the market moves which are just diagonally opposite to that of the previous day. So this sort of moves they try to do it in order to stun the traders. So if you become stunned then you become victim. Instead if you understand that the players are capable of making such bullish and bearish moves alternatively before we could realize or before we find that there is nothing fundamental or technical in the market and ultimately depending upon that of the traders positions the players make such big moves and you know that there are so many occasions wherein the traders think that the data release is of prime importance and which is going to decide what is going to be the economic strength and weakness of a particular country. So we know conventionally we go in for non-farm payroll, the interest rate decisions and also the other aspects pertaining to that of the economic development. But during such time, they are not made any big moves. But on Friday, you know that it is a month in time and for the measures pertaining to that of the rescue in the case of zero zone, immediately they gain in the case of euro followed by that in the case of Australian dollar also they made about 200 pips gain and GBB gained relatively less when compared to that of euro and Australian dollar on that particular day and after some time during the US session they started gaining the levels in the case of USD and as well so we know that they gained the levels in the case of Euro and GBB, later on gained the levels in the case of USDM, telling some other story. After the US data, the USDM started weakening, I mean gaining the levels or yen weakened against US dollar. That is how they just gave the interpretation, but ultimately they gained substantially the levels in the case of the yen cross. So we need to understand how they are going to make moves in the market. For that, the algorithm helps us to a greater extent. And I also posted in my blog, inoindices.com slash blog, 
what are the expected market moves for today and on a daily basis I will post it and also give the market reading in case if I give a delayed post so that you will be able to follow that and try to use it as a guiding factor for that keeping away all other sentiments or all other in-depth study of the market. So we may do in-depth study of the market taking into consideration various technical analysis like various types of moving averages, various types of other statistical analysis etc. And there are even arguments in fxtrade.net chat that what sort of moving averages one could take. So it is endless, the arguments will be endless but ultimately what is more important is that when and how the players are expected to make the moves in the market. So when is pertaining to that of the timing. So we need to understand the market timings followed by that of the players and how exactly they make use of the timing to make their specific type of moves on a daily basis. And that if you could understand then we will find it is very easy to track the market. With regard to the market trading. So we note down the initial lows and the highs around 3.30 GMT using the live market 4 page and 4 majors and 2 commodity pairs and use them as a reference levels because the players also use them as a reference levels. The initial lows and the highs set for the day and then subsequently the players make the up and down moves. If they make a brief downward move below that initial low and come above that of the initial low, then we know it is a stop and in less than 30 minutes. If they try to just go up to that of the initial low and come up, then it is a false move in less than 30 minutes if they make it. And the extended move, if they go below that of the initial low or above that of the initial high and try to stay there for 2 hours and reverse. The intentional move is they continue to make the slide or the rise for about two sessions and start of the third session and reverse. And now besides that you come across the extended stop and moves. The extended stop and moves are used during that of the trend reversal time. So you would have seen on Thursday and Friday they have done nothing but the extended stop and. So they made a quick downward stop and on Thursday and that created the feel that there is no point in holding any long position in the market. It is better to stay put or better to take the sell level. Any level you sell you will be able to book profit. That sort of scenario was perceived by the traders and on Friday straight away they opened with 125 pips positive net change and gained another 125 pips. That is how they make the moves. So extended stop end is the one it takes a lesser time frame and it retraces the entire loss and gain further up. That is extended stop end. So that when they make extended stop end if the traders are trading without the stop they will be given the margin call in case if they are taken more positions or if they are over traded. So ultimately what we need to understand is the players are here to trap the traders. So it is a mesh and in that mesh we have to walk carefully without getting caught. And we know very well the players are here to trap us and still we can outsmart them and try to do it carefully and you know that whenever like a spider when it walks with it off the sticky surface you know the entire web will be the sticky surface and in that entire web you will find that there are certain regions which are non-sticky and if the spider keeps the leg over that of the sticky area even it will be caught. But when the spider keeps the leg over that of the non-sticky area and climb and it can reach the prey which is being trapped and it can eat. Otherwise the spider will become the victim for the net. It is a similar situation here. We have to find out what are the non-sticky area and try to move over that of the 
net or the web in which you find the surprises continue to happen on a daily basis or a weekly or a monthly basis so during the monthly month end and the month beginning time i have been cautioning every month that they are expected to make the big moves all along if you notice it, the previous week before that of the last week market was so subdued and there were spread of 20 30 pips on a daily basis and people are wondering what happened to market and nobody is interested in taking up the market or bringing down the market that is how it appeared but last week and the last day they showed the true color so ultimately we have to understand the trend reversal moves are pain creating moves and we need to read them properly anticipate that they are expected to make the trend reversal moves so now this is a week beginning and also the month beginning from second six so you do come across again the trend reversal moves so whenever the in a particular week a month gets over the new month starts in five days time frame the trend reversal will be completed five trading days but in case if in the last week of the month gets over in a week and the first week of the month is a different week then you will find for 10 trading days the market is expected to bring in more volatile moves unexpected moves so during such times we can do only swing trades and we can use effectively hedging and try to book either way profit so this we have to keep it in mind and there is no point in blaming anybody that you said euro will go up whereas it has come down and things like that because they are bound to make the volatile moves alternatively as a result those who have taken the buy position after the rise are expected to be stopped out and those who have taken the sell after the drop are expected to be stopped out so ultimately the players aim to trap such trader so what a smart trader can do wait for such extended downward stop and in this week and capture buy position after that drop and then you try to wait and hold the position they are expected to gain substantially the levels in the case of euro and gbp at the time book profit and if you could wait for such quick moves you will be able to really make very big money from that of the market ultimately it needs patience some traders become addicted to trading so they are not able to watch the market without holding a position and they have to get rid of it they have to look at the market do all the studies what they want and calmly watch the market and look for the great opportunities of a quick drop and you know endlessly they cannot drop and they have to drop about 150 pips or 200 pips maximum on certain days and afterwards they have to consolidate there and then they have to reverse it and during such time if you take a buy and the next day you see that you are able to see straight away 125 pips profit and then for the rise you are able to maximize the profit using the trading stop so there comes the trading strategy because if they gain quickly after a big drop immediately you know thursday they opened the market high and started sliding in a big way then friday again they opened it high and it will give the impression that they could slide again building the sell position but actually we need to find out whether they are building the positions sell positions or they are buying even at a high level so that you can use it and that you can identify it by keeping stop at entry in the buy position and trail the stop of maintaining 30 pips if you are doing position trade try to keep 75 pips trailing stop you will be able to see whether they are trying to to trap the short sellers or the long holders so ultimately our understanding whom they are trying to trap is very important so the best way is instead of doing so much of analysis whom they are trying to trap it we can use the hedging to limit the risk because our equity is very limited and try to buy near that of the low or whenever they make a quick drop and then try to keep stop at entry if the position makes profit or try to take a sell when they are stop cutting the new high and started making the slide 
for more than 30 minutes then you can try to take a cell and then use stop at entry so either way if you keep stop at entry you are eliminating the risk then later on you can try to maximize the profit and by using the trailing stop and also a trailing limit so you know that normally they gain about 150 pips and stop with that and try to hold the market on friday they gained about 250 pips in the case of zero from 1.2450 to 1.27 area they gained it and that exceptions happen during the trend reversal time when there is want of selling and if there are no selling and the player and traders are short and they want to do the short covering the players absorb all the higher level cells and try to rise it to the maximum level and give it to the traders so out of panic the traders towards the close of the session come and do the short covering afterwards they made that slide and just made their positions neutral so this is how they just play against us we need to understand use the trading strategies effectively so that we are not caught on the wrong side of the market now in market trading we note down the initial low and the high around 330 gmt and they are being followed by that of the players and so today we found that euro formed 1.2615 the low 1.2676 is the high we just opened uh, flat and made a small upward move and started making the slide during the, the Japanese session. And in the case of GBB, they are not breached the high or the low in the case of Euro. In the case of GBB, 1.5651 is the low, 1.5730 is the high, they are not breached the low or the high. Then Yen, 79.74 is the low, 79.97 is the high, they are not breached it. And CHF, 94. 77 is the low, 95.88, sorry, 95.24 is the high and they are reached. Then in the case of Canadian dollar, 1.0162 is the low, 1.0198 is the high, they are not reached. It. Australian dollar, 1.0215 is the low, 1.0261 is the high, they are not reached. It. So, what they have formed as the initial lows and the high is around 330 GMT. Still, they are making the swings within this particular range. So, what is going to happen today? As far as the forecast algorithm is concerned, that initial dip, that dip has already happened and a rise towards late session is expected. Uh, it is around 1519 GMT. After 1530 GMT, then the session starts. They could slowly gain the levels in the case of Euro and GBP. And they are expected to gain quickly the levels in the case of the denominator currencies to start with in this week. And later on, they are expected to again aggressively gain the levels in the case of the operator. And in a quick rise, during that of the early part of the European session and a quick drop during that of the late session are expected. So they could do either way stop ins above that of the initial high about 30 to 50 pips and below that of the low they could do another stop -ins during the late European session. And that is part of the game because on a daily basis they make money only by doing stop ins session after session. So in one session if they make the downward stop and make money, create the bearish wheel and induce the traders to sell after that drop. In the next session they make an upward stop and, and thereby those who had taken the sell positions after the visible drop, they get caught and they go in for a short covering. And this is the game of hitting the stops. Then your session swing and rise moves are expected. So it is the first week of the month, very volatile moves may be seen in this week and you know the data release time could be used effectively by that of the players to bring in big moves and more USD weakening moves are expected in this particular month. So my humble suggestion will be do buy and sell in the case of Euro GBB 
and Australian dollar and also in the case of USD yen, USD CHF and Canadian USD CAD because everywhere they are expected to make a drop one day, the rise the next day, that sort of moves. So after the drop, if you buy, then keep hedging order to limit the risk and keep stop at the entry once they show profit in the position and then wait for the quick rise to book profit. Aim for swing trades during this sort of volatile moves, you cannot think of position straight straight away. And after the midweek, you can think of position trade, otherwise the next week you will come across weak beginning falls before the trend is being set. At the time you can take a buy and they are expected to gain more level. So try to understand what sort of moves they are going to do during different weeks. Then plan your trades accordingly and wait for appropriate opportunities in the market. When they make quick drops, then understand that they wanted to accumulate positions against what they have sold on Friday. So at that time, you try to buy it and they may take one or two days and hold it lower level so that the traders taken the long positions will lose patience and liquidate the long positions and later on, they will gain the levels very quickly. So this is a very known game but appears unknown every time. So, with regard to the moves in the rest of the week, tomorrow they are expected to uh, make more of USB gaining move from the start of the Japanese session. And today, as I explained, they are expected to swing and rise, and probably they may swing and leave it or rise. It depends upon the traders taking position. And in case if they hold it during the US session and tomorrow they are expected to open high and try to gain the levels during that of the Japanese session and after initial dip during that of the European session, slow firming up move could be seen during that of the European session and a quick rise could be seen during that of the US session. And midweek 4th of July they are expected to make the either way stop in. So, in this either way stop and they are expected to open lower and then gain the levels during that of the late Japanese and the early European session and drop big during that of the late European session and US session. And then Thursday they are expected to make an upward move that is open higher and make a small dip during that of the early European session and start gaining the levels and Friday and they are expected to make the drop before the non-form payroll and after that they are expected to make the aggressive gain. So I will explain to you uh, in the blog and also during Thursday next Asian session live market analysis webinar what would be the possible moves in coming days. So let me minimize the PowerPoint presentation and try to answer to the questions which are asked here. Meanwhile, I will focus the camera over that of the live market code page and initially the live market code page was struck so I was not using it. I will give the link for the same. I will just focus the camera over that of the live market code page. Now you find that Eero is making about 38 pips negative net change and you find that the low has not been breached and even though market is closed at the of the low and probably around 535 45 GMT they will try to make a false move up to that of the low or briefly breach the low in one or two cases and then try to take up. Then in the case of Yen it is also making negative net change and in the case of GPP it is also making negative net change as a result, you find cumulative negative net change seen in the case of Euro yen, GBB yen. So they are making downward moves here and later on they are expected to gain the level. So weak beginning is a false move or to whatever they do in the process opposite to that they intend to make during the rest of the week. Then in the case of the denominator currency, USD yen, they are showing the contrarian move of USD weakening move but in the case of Euro and GBP they are making USD gaining move and in the case of CHF 
they gained about 28 pips when compared to 38 pips fall in the case of Eero. So that means they wanted to make a little bit lower level in the case of Eero CHF. It is holding around with 2 pips positive net change. And later on they are expected to gain the levels in the case of CHF as well as USD CAD, Swiss and Canadian dollar. And it is currently trading in the middle level 1.0182. They are expected to make either way stop in the case of commodity, especially USD CAD. So try to look for such a downward move and try to take a buy position. And when they are making an upward stop and you try to take a sell position, close it within the session or within the day. You will be able to see very good swing trade opportunities. And in the case of Australian dollar, and you know, the week before last week, and it was appearing, everybody was telling that Australian dollar is under severe pressure and it could go below 0 0.97 and things like that. And now you find that it is holding the Friday gain with lesser negative net change when compared to that of Euro and GBV. But after gaining the levels in the case of Euro and GBV, they are expected to make one big drop and then rise in the case of Australian dollar. Keep it in mind because they cannot rise Australian dollar similar to that of the gains what they do it in the case of Euro and GBP. Euro and GBP they can gain about 1000 pips whereas in Australian dollar they cannot do that much. And so what they do is they just drop in a big way and also handle Euro Australian dollar, GBP Australian dollar that way and later on gain the level. So the net gain will be about 150 pips to 100 pips on a weekly basis. So that is how they will try to do it. So just because Australian dollar looks very strong, don't try to take a buy when they are consolidating it. And only when they make quick drop, you try to take a buy, then you will be able to see quick profit. Otherwise, you will get struck. And there are so many traders. And you know, last month, uh, everybody was telling that Australian dollar is relatively strong when compared to that of Euro and GBP. A lot of traders have taken the buy position around 1.06, 1.05 and things like that and they got struck. So you have to keep in mind that the players have got their own limitations in making such big moves in the case of Australian dollar. So only after the drop you try to buy, when they are simply doing consolidation, don't try to aim for swing trade. And that sort of swing trades can be focused only in the case of Euro and GBB where either way swings are bound to happen between sessions and you will be able to book profit. Either you, you do a sell and buy trade or a buy and sell trade, you will be able to book profit. But if you want to trade in line with that of the trend, then try to buy and later on book profit. And in that buy should not be just like that, take any level, but whenever they are making downward stop, then try to take a buy. And then you will be able to book profit. Still use the hedging order to limit the risk because the players know to what extent they have to make the moves in order to earn money from the other market. But you won't be knowing it. Okay, but has got a question. Uh, what would be a good buying level for Euro and Chip? So Euro and GBP they have made a nominal drop and they are bound to make some good drops in this particular week. You may call it as a retracement or whatever it is and as I explained that today during the late European session they may make one drop and Wednesday they are expected to make a very quick drop and afterwards Thursday and Friday they are expected to rise. So at that time, if you try to take a buy, and that can give substantial profit. Otherwise, either way trades, you can do it. Use the hedging order, aiming for about 30 to 45 pips profit. If you want a good entry level, then wait for Wednesday's low. Wednesday, late European session, low. Uh, does the 30 minute rule apply to equally during both early mid and late sessions that is can we use this in late tech positions also during mid and late sessions see the 30 minutes from the start of the session is very very safe 
and similarly 30 minutes after the start of the late session is very safe. But mid session is not that much safe with regard to majors, but in the case of crosses it's fine, you can take it. Every 30 minutes they are expected to bring in intraday trend reversal or session wise trend reversal. The current USD CHF level is good buying level, yes. And uh, they are just shown below that of 0 0.95, that is a great level. And still, a small dip during the late sessions, you can try to take a buy. And use the hedging order to limit the risk, please. And chance. Euro CHF does not seem to get out of the notional peg of about 1.20. See, I explained it many times that. Uh, it is nothing to do with that of the government, but the players are trying to hold Euro CHF and induce the traders to lose patience. They either do they try to do a buy and sell trade or a buy sell and buy trade. And later on, they will make quick moves. Now they are handling Euro GBP. So Euro GBP, if you see that it is trading around 0 0.8057 and to 81 on the upside and 7950 on the downside and they will build the sell positions here and drop it to that of 0 0.7877 area and later on you will find the euro CHF is expected to go to 1.23, 1 1.25 and ultimately they wanted to take it to 1.30 in the case of euro CHF. That's what my forecast for the says. Then Jan, do you think, uh, what do you think about USD INR? USD INR this week will be somewhat volatile around 55 to 56 area and later on it is expected to gain level. That is, uh, sorry, INR is expected to gain level. That means from 56 it is expected to come to 52 and once it breaches 52 it is straight to go to 47 area. Then Kuti, Euro USD, uh, how much dip expected? Probably they may go to 1.2550 or 1.2530 level. Yes. Will Euro touch 1.19 in December? I doubt it very much. And this year, uh, more of USD weakening move is expected according to my algorithm. So I am not expecting 1.19 in the case of Euro. And we will come across more and more aggressive gains and later on people will just change their opinion. Then Tetra, you have earlier mentioned that USD CAD is lead currency. Does this refer to the general fact that commodity currency, yeah, only commodity currency lead the rally or it is also with a reference to the intraday swings. So we need to track the commodity pairs. They may sometimes use USD CAD or sometimes used USD, I mean Australian dollar. And you know that USD CAD is a, such a cunning currency and they can simply make, in the case of USD CAD, the USD weakening move. Say, for example, a dropping USD CAD. At the time, you might think that Euro and GBV are expected to drop, but they may gain the level. So be careful, and you need a sophistication with regard to the understanding of it, which is beyond the scope of this particular free webinar. Because they are all given to the top, the people who take the professional trader training. So, no more questions. So, I will go back to that of the PowerPoint presentation. So, with regard to the initial lows and the highs, they are just keeping the market subdued and not breaching the high at the low in any of the currencies and now the late session has started so they could slowly gain the level 
probably it appears that they may not come for it down or stop and, and probably late European session they could do the downward stop and below the low so before that so it appears that what they are done during the session start is the downward stop since they are not breaching the initial lows during that of the late Japanese session from 5.30 GMT on was the late Japanese session starts and it provides till 7 GMT and they are not breaching it. Uh, yeah, now USDN they have breached and it has come to 79.57. So that is to make for the push in the case of EN cross on the downside. Whereas CHF they are not done it, Australian Canadian dollar they are not done it. So only USD yen. Similar to last week. Last week Monday they, they did only the breaching of the low in the case of USD yen. They are trying to do similar move now. And watch when they stop cutting the new low for more than 30 minutes, then you can understand that they are going to rise it. So normally when you want to take positions in the case of the N crosses, so when Euro stop cutting the new low or the intermediary low for more than 30 minutes. Yen also stop cutting the low for more than 30 minutes. During the mid session, you can try to take a buy position in the case of Euro Yen and keep 50 percent hedging order below that. You'll be able to see that you are not stopped out or hedged. Then the expected market moves dip and rise or the expected moves. They could do the rise. I think straight away as they are just breached with a low in the case of USD yen creating USD weakening sentiment. Then Euro they are expected to gain I mean during the European session they are expected to gain the levels quickly and drop as well. Then during US session they are expected to swing and raise the level. So it's the first week of the month July. So the volatile moves are part of the game and they are expected to make extended downward stop and again before making a big rise. So look for such moves and trade of wisely. So don't become surprised then you might get caught vulnerably. Your long position you will cut at the lowest point and the short position you might build and rip and later on do the short covering after the rise. Don't do such a wrong trades. So after the drop buy. So always understand quick moves or false moves in the market and when they make quick moves on the downside and stop cutting the new low for more than 30 minutes then try to take a buy and that will be a very, very wise way of trading in the market. So trade along with that of the players so that you are not caught on the sticky web. You will be able to walk along the non-sticky web and like the spider, the predator. So we'll meet again on 5th of July for Asian session live market analysis, a review of the analysis what we have done for this particular week, a review what the analysis I have given and also we will try to analyze for the rest of the days in this particular week and also try to envisage or derive what could be the possible moves in coming days. So I take this opportunity to thank FX Street and all you people who have come here to listen to my webinar and we'll again meet on Thursday. Until then, bye. Wish you happy trading.